Hi, this is Steve at BlessedHopeForever.com. We are in the year 2023, but if uh, this was 40 years ago, uh, say 1983, the Christian world wouldn't be so interested in end times prophecy, nor would there be the hunger for truth about the end times as we see today, which has grown exponentially in our adult lifetimes. So regardless of the skepticism that still exists uh, about our Lord's near return, I think the verdict is in. What I find amazing is the number of professing Christians that you, whom you'll never hear say, come Lord Jesus at a time in which His return is so obviously near. And what I continue to find puzzling is the number of professing Christians who seek to find fault with those who are crying, come Lord Jesus every day when they are not, and who seem to find uh, some sort of pleasure in wrongly accusing some of date setting when they aren't doing that at all, you know, just for merely suggesting that Christ might return for His church in whatever year we're currently in. So since I think 2023 is a possibility as I and I can say that about every year, uh, I think it would be fun to take us backward in time, 3,000 years from our current year, 2023, to the year 977 B.C. What happened in 977 B.C.? The completion and dedication of the Temple of Solomon at Jerusalem. Uh, you'll find the biblical record in 1 Kings chapter 8, verses 12 through 30. The Temple of Solomon was uh, a small building, its dimensions being only 105 feet, about a third of a football field wide, uh, and 150 feet, uh, uh, or let's see, yeah, 150 feet long. That'd be about a half a football field long. It was built of white marble. Uh, it was so excellently put together that uh, the joints couldn't be distinguished and the whole building looked as though it had been cut out of one entire stone. It must have been really magnificent to look at. It was begun on the second day of the month, uh, a month called uh, Ziv, uh, according, uh, or which corresponds to uh, uh, the 21st day of April, uh, which is ER, the month of ER today. In the Hebrew Bible, before the Babylonian captivity, the, the month was called Ziv. Uh, we read about that in Kings, in uh, First Kings. And Ziv is a Hebrew word that means light or glow. Uh, and uh, so uh, ER... Uh, formerly Ziv, uh, it usually falls in April or May on the Gregorian calendar. Uh, in the seventh month of the year 977 B.C., the glorious day of dedication arrived. The temple was completed, and the time was the fe Feast of Tabernacles. And that day corresponds with September 23rd, 2023, this year. That would be the sixth anniversary of the, of the Revelation 12 sign, and uh, six, as you know, equals man. Man. So, if you look at Torah calendar, uh, 23rd September 977 B.C., it was the first day of Tabernacles. Now, if you come over to the 23rd of this year, 2023, you, what you find out is it's the fall equinox. Uh, it just lands on fall, the, the 23rd does. Uh, fall equinox, and it's a Sabbath. It's a Saturday. It's followed by the eighth day of the month, and eight means new beginning. So the first temple's built. Israel sent forth her thousands. The ark was brought from its resting place, and the, the great procession began its march to the temple with David's son Solomon leading the procession. 3,000 years ago, 
I think it was 3,000 years exact from going back from 2023 back to 977 BC or 978 or, or 6. Or I can't. There is a little room for adjustment here, but it's amazing that it's in the middle. Even if it was a year or two off either way, it would still be awfully odd, don't you think, that you know this first temple, the very first temple, Solomon's temple, right, stands right in the middle of the, of the 6,000 period of man's ruling on earth. I, I think that's kind of cool myself. So I looked into this. Uh, First uh, were the 12 princes of the tribes, then came the elders, 70 in number. Uh, uh, then the priests uh, sounding their silver trumpets, followed by the Levites, bearing the sacred Ark of the Covenant and all the holy vessels that had been in the tent at Mount Opal. Uh, the distance traveled was about a half a mile, uh, this procession. And it moved with great deliberation. And at every six paces, an animal was sacrificed. Uh, the course was, was strewn with sacrificial blood. And the scriptures say that the sheep and the oxen sacrificed could not be numbered. And we, dearly beloved, we are counted as sheep to be slaughtered on our way to be dedicated to our Heavenly Father. And we, dearly beloved, we are counted as sheep to be slaughtered on our way to be dedicated to our Heavenly Father. With these elaborate and solemn ceremonies, the ark was brought to the temple and conveyed by the priests to its resting place in the Holy of Holies at the western side and between the wings of the cherubim. And the vast number of people uh, that were there, they assembled in the great courts. The priests came forth, from, uh, came forth from the holy place. The Levites, which were singers, arrayed in white robes with cymbals and harps, stood on the east side of the altar and with them 120 priests sounding trumpets, praising the Lord. And if that doesn't sound like what John saw when he was sort of like what he saw when he was caught up to the third heaven, then I, 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 don't, I, don't, I don't know. Solomon, then he addressed the congregation. And when he had finished, he ascended the brazen scaffold and kneeling, he stretched forth his hands in prayer. And, and when he had made an end of praying, uh, the fire came down from heaven, consumed the burnt offerings and the sacrifices. And uh, from what I read, uh, the Holy Spirit said to you and I, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. King Solomon dedicated the temple at Jerusalem exactly 3,000 years ago at what would be the 6,000 year midpoint if it's calculated in relationship to the, our present year 2023. 2023 back to 977. Uh, now that 3,000 year midpoint, it won't, it won't be, the, it, it may be in 2024, may be a year or two off. Okay, it certainly... I don't think it was in 2022 or 2021. We're past that. But it just seems odd to me, folks, that we're looking at the middle. And that's the first temple. And you and I are the temple. There's going to be another third temple when we're gone. I just find it interesting. So, first temple, Solomon's temple, completion and dedication uh, at this midpoint. I believe, of 6,000 years. Uh, if 2023 ends the church age, that's a big if, okay? You know, it may not be the actual middle of the 6,000 years, but it is the midpoint uh, area if you count backwards from 2023. I knew that David's time as king was around the midpoint uh, many years ago. Uh, well, what I didn't know was that the exact center, uh, pretty much, I believe, going by 2023 backwards was Solomon dedicating the temple at Jerusalem. And so here we are. Here you are listening to me. If anything, folks, it seems to uh, confirm that God does indeed employ numbers. 
so I think we'd do well to take a hard look at the nature, the purpose, the function, the characteristics of Israel's first temple, given the fact that we are members of the one temple today, a temple made without hands. Now, to me, that screams out Christ's deity, but you know, not made with earthly hands, which unlike the previous two earthly temples, will not be destroyed, but will be removed to make way for, guess what? Well, the last and final third earthly temple. The last short-lived third earthly temple. Just the fact alone, folks, that Christ's body, the church, is the temple, makes this uh, look at the dedication of the first uh, temple 3,000 years or so ago more than interesting. That's my claim that the first temple was completed and dedicated 3,000 years ago, plus or minus a year. You know, maybe, maybe that'll hold down some of the criticism. Uh, I don't know. Entry into this Holy of Holies was heavily restricted. The high priest of Israel was the only authority permitted to enter the sanctuary. Uh, that, that symbolizes our Lord Jesus Christ and only did so on Yom Kippur, uh, Day of Atonement, carrying the blood of a sacrificial lamb and burning incense. It has redemption written all over it. I am fairly certain that the Lord Jesus Christ offered a made a legitimate offer to His people, Israel, where that they could accept Him as Messiah and the kingdom age would be ushered in. He loves His people, Israel. And Atonement is not something that's exclusive to just us, we, the church. In addition to serving as a religious building or, uh, for worship, the first temple, it functioned as a place of assembly for the Israelites. So Solomon's temple is about God's Word. You know, the Ark of the Covenant. It's about, you see God's Word. You see in this God's presence. It's about sacrifice. It's about fellowship it's about worship was the first temple dedication at the midpoint and will the present temple the church be presented dedicated to the father in 2023 i don't know folks i don't know what i do know is at the rapture christ jesus will present us his body the temple hello unto God the Father. That, that I do know. We, the church, are that temple. Okay? But we're members of that one temple. Okay? We're not a bunch of little temples running around, despite what many of other denominations may believe. And Christ Jesus will present His body, the church, unto God the Father. He will do that. Now note how this... this uh, uh, this calculation it doesn't begin with a verifiable creation year, you know, you know, and you know, 4,000 BC, whatever, and work forward. It doesn't do that at all. It simply counts 3,000 years backwards from this year to Solomon's temple dedication. And due to numerous factors, my calculations can be, you know, they can, they can be off, but it can be a plus or minus, a, a margin of error, which isn't too bad considering that we're talking about a period of 3,000 years, but it has me kind of on the edge of my seat here, uh, scratching my head, wondering, you know, how, how could we even su dare suggest God doesn't employ numbers? It's right in the middle. Even if it isn't the exact middle, it's, right, it's at the middle. And that alone is fascinating. I do know that building of the temple began in the spring. It was completed in the fall. Uh, so, you know, you can't just calculate, you know, from one January 1st of 4000 B.C. to January 1st of 2023. You can't do that. There's, there's always, just like ages, it's not, you can say, I'm 66, but, you know, I'm technically, I'm 66 years and two months. You know, so, you know, that's... Uh, It was in the seventh month of the year, okay, 977 B.C. 
That's when the dedication of the temple occurred. And the time was the Feast of Tabernacles. And 2023 will mark six years since the Revelation 12 sign. Six equals man. If I'm, if I'm off a year and it's 2024, now we're looking at, well, it's seven years since the Revelation 12 sign. Folks, I don't know what's going to happen. All I know is that this subject fascinates me. And so I thought I'd waste your time with it. Uh, the uh, Israel is jealous because of the gospel that we preach. Tabernacles means God with us. So imagine, you know, us raptured. You talk about jealousy. Imagine us raptured on the day that Israel celebrates tabernacle. If by any means I may provoke to jealousy them which are my flesh, Jews, Paul says, and might save some of them, Romans eleven fourteen. What would cause such extreme jealousy? I mean, in, in the extreme. Well, the basic cause of the jealousy itself is the gospel. Uh, scripture makes it clear about that. But, you know, the salvation, deliverance of Gentiles, which the rapture would be, as far as, as they're concerned, that would be the boiling over of their jealousy. Uh, imagine the church raptured on the very day that Israel begins celebrating tabernacles, meaning God with us. Now that's where the math took me. If you look at the, uh, the, the Greek word there for jealousy, paradzolao, it's uh, to make jealous, provoke to anger. It's a compound word. It's from uh, para, close beside, and Zalu meaning boil over with desire. Basically, it means pressure to provoke change, especially in an up close and personal way. Uh, there's a lot of force behind the para, the, 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 suff the prefix of the word. Uh, so, you know, remember those words, uh, the virgin will conceive and give birth to a son and they'll call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. Matthew chapter 1. In the Old Testament, the presence of God with His people was most evident when His glory filled the tabernacle and the temple. But that glory was was far uh, is far surpassed by the personal presence of God the Son, God with us, God in us, us in Him, He in us. Folks, He hadn't left us; we're in Him. He's in, we're in Him. He's in us. One in Christ. Jews hate that. For in Christ lives all the fullness of God in a human body. Colossians 2.9 Dearly beloved, He didn't do that with Israel. You're unique. Jesus isn't just God with us temporarily, okay, but eternally. God the Son, never ceasing for a moment to be God, took on a fully human nature. He became God, God with us forever. And... Matthew 28, I read, Surely I'm with you always until the very end of the age. Okay? I looked at that phrase, looked at that word, looked at the grammar. Okay? Let, let me tell you what the word until means. All right? I am with you always until the very end of the age. What age? Our present age. Okay? Does that mean He's not going to be with us anymore after that? No. No. No, He's talking about as long as we're here. And uh, that ends, this dispensation of grace, this grace age is going to end. He says, I'm with you always until the very end of the age. The very end. Very is the end. You can almost say right up to the exact end. And when you look at that word until in the Greek, it's heos is the word. It means as far as, up to, as much as. That's what it means. So we got, we got two earthly temples. We have Christ calling Himself the temple. We see His body, the church, us being called the temple. We see 
the Lamb of God's uh, sacrificial death, the, the temple curtain being torn, which led to the body of Christ, whose individual members, individual lives are sacrificial sheep to be slaughtered until the time we go to be with the Lord. Which is then followed by the third temple, which is said to be defiled in the middle of the week, Daniel's 70th week, middle of the week. Okay? You don't think God likes middles? Well, you got 1260, 1260, you got a midpoint, Antichrist defiles the temple, cl claims to be God. Uh, this is the midpoint. Why did he do that? Why, why is there a mid? Why do we have a midpoint? I mean, why does there have to be a midpoint? I mean, couldn't the abomination of desolation occur at the third waypoint? I mean, or two thirds of the waypoint? It's at the midpoint, and it has to deal a lot, I believe, with that first or that last earthly temple. It's certainly relevant. You know, Daniel's seventieth week. Uh, that number 70 is all over everything. The first temple, the first one, having been dedicated in the middle of the 6,000 years. If we're at the end of the 6,000 years, which I think we are, uh, if not exact, we're close. So just to clarify, 2023, back to the 977 B.C. center, middle of the first temple dedication is 3,000. Uh, maybe 2,999 depending on the months, you know, the, the, the uh, margin of error there. Uh, and that's what that is. The word, uh, I looked at the word dedicate, you know, means to renew, inaugurate, uh, consecrate. So now you go to John chapter 10, verse 23, Feast of Dedication. It's the Feast of Dedication. That's Hanukkah. And Jesus is confronting unbelieving Jews on Solomon's porch. I only reference where the, we have Jesus and Solomon's porch together. Okay? I uh, won't go into detail about you know the size and how big it all that was and all that, but... Uh, but uh, to give you some sort of perspective, it would have taken Jesus about 36 footsteps to walk the length of Solomon's porch. Uh, if you pass through Solomon's porch toward the temple, now you'd, you'd, it, that would place you in the court of the Gentiles. Uh, Jo Josephus wrote some on it. Uh, it overlooked a deep valley supported by walls of uh, square stone, very white. Uh, so anyway, one winter at the uh, Feast of uh, Dedication or Hanukkah, Jesus, he's, he's in Jerusalem, uh, and John describes him in the, the temple courts walking in Solomon's colonnade, uh, King J uh, or King James's porch. Uh, that was the gathering places for believers in Jerusalem before they were dispersed from their homeland. So 923, fall equinox this year, the September 23rd, fall equinox. That, that could end the 6,000 years if, if that first temple dedication in 976 B.C. marks the midpoint of that 6,000 years. So uh, what could very well occur 23 September 2023? Well, the dedication of the going home of this temple. Now, it's not my body. I'm just a member of it. So are you. The one true temple of God on earth. Christ's body, the church. One made without hands. So, uh, first temple completed, dedicated 3,000 years ago. At the time was the Feast of Tabernacles. The date was the September 23rd. Uh, sixth year anniversary of the Revelation 12 sign. Uh, six equals man. Uh, it was, you know, it's the 23rd day of the 23rd year. I don't know if you, that excites you. Um, there were sacrifices made all the way to the dedication. We are considered to be living sacrifices. The, the church today is the temple. It's the only temple of God on earth. Uh, 
uh, Solomon's Porch was a gathering place for believers. We're looking to gather together with one another in the Lord soon. At the rapture, um, the church is removed to make way for the third earthly temple. The temple, it's all about God's word, sacrifice, fellowship, worship. Uh, th that the temple was dedicated to God by Solomon. The church will be presented to God by Christ. Tabernacles represents God with us. We don't think much about tabernacles as a, a rapture date, but maybe we ought to. I don't know. Uh, Emmanuel means God with us, so his name. Uh, the third temple is defiled in the middle of the Daniel 70th week. Uh, John 10.23, Jesus can, we see Jesus confronting unbelieving Jews on Solomon's porch. The whole reason there's going to be a tribulation period is because of those unbelieving Jews. The rapture would certainly intensify Israel's jealousy toward the gospel, especially if it occurred on a feast of tabernacles. Above all, more than all the other feasts, uh, just think about Jesus as the tabernacle. Uh, the tabernacle was for use in the wilderness. Well, we know our Lord was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness. Uh, the church, uh, the temple today, is, was led into its wilderness, folks. Wilderness of testing. Uh, and that tabernacle has absolutely no meaning apart from Jesus. Uh, just as the tabernacle in the wilderness contained and displayed God's glory, even more we behold the glory of God in the face of Christ today, dearly beloved, and soon we'll behold His glory in person. I hope that this blessed you. Uh, if it did, leave me a comment. Uh, I love you all, I truly do. Rest in His goodness, His grace, His love, His mercy. He loves you with an everlasting love, as do we. Until next time, this is Steve. Thanks for watching.